Kia ora. For the past two months, we've highlighted and celebrated the work of many great New Zealanders, the frontline essential workers of the COVID crisis. Tonight, we celebrate, in a very unique fashion, our storytellers. Tonight's about you. The journalists, the photographers, the video journalists, and the broadcasters who have delivered critical information through the relentless pursuit of accurate, balanced, and high quality journalism. And through your questioning of our political leaders and our public servants, you've held the powerful to account on behalf of all Kiwis. To you all, thank you for the work of the past eight weeks, and importantly, the past year. From town halls to parliament chambers, from boardrooms to sports fields, we've told New Zealand stories beautifully and brilliantly. In 2019, New Zealand hit global headlines after shocking, heartbreaking scenes in Christchurch and on Fakari, White Island. Our journalism was world class. And now, in these troubled, unsettled times, Kiwis have turned to you in even greater numbers for clarity and for understanding. You've delivered, regardless of where in New Zealand you work or who you work for. You are doing the old industry proud, your businesses proud, and yourselves proud. To the many Voyager Media Awards finalists, I wish you all the very best of luck. And to all of our winners, congratulations. <laughs>
That's about it, as close as we can get. Oh, it's just wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for getting all those, you know, the introduction right about me. Did I get it all right? Well, I mean, little... right, not that you did miss out quite a bit about my achievements and stuff like that. Yeah, Yeah. So. Um, we just had to edit it for, for time. Right, yeah, okay. But what a crowd we've got. Oh, yes. It's not about me, it's about you guys. And wow, you look incredible, all of you, and what you're wearing and the shoes and that. Just... Just yeah, slow, well done. A slow clap. Still Marvellous. Thing. All right, <laughs> should we kick things off? Jane, permission to kick things off? Yeah, go. Thank great. you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Jackie, yes. after you. Okay, great. Let's kick things off, <laughs> as they say in rugby. <laughs> First up are the nominees for best headline, caption or hook. And the winner is Barnaby Sharp, the Nelson Mail. Barnaby's word plays were well thought out, effective and completely relevant to the stories they accompanied. The winner of the next category, Best Artwork Graphics, receives the Graphic Artists Trophy. The judges have awarded a runner-up and that goes to Toby Morris from the spin-off. And the winner is the One News Design Team TVNZ. The judges said the TVNZ design team's graphics were innovative, clear, and easy to understand. Next up, best interview or profile. The judges watched or read 94 interviews in this category, but there could be only one winner, and that was Michelle Langston from the NZ Herald. Michelle's profile of star geek Naomi Arnold was the bright light in this category. The judges said, Beautifully written and constructed, it was a joy to read. Congratulations, Michelle. All right, the finalists in Cartoonist of the Year are vying for the historic Sir Gordon Minhinnick Trophy. And this year's winner is Toby Morris from the spin-off. Wow. Toby's use of strong imagery and animation makes him a skillful visual storyteller. His strip regarding a New Zealand Muslim's response to the Christchurch massacre was very poignant. Congratulations, Toby. On to our Opinion Writer of the Year, a category that attracted 115 entries. The judges have awarded a runner-up, and that goes to Simon Wilson from the New Zealand Herald. They particularly wanted to acknowledge Simon's extraordinary writing on the mosque shootings. And the 2020 Opinion Writer of the Year is Emma Espiner, Newsroom. Emma's portfolio stopped you in your tracks and made you think, the judges said. She has a storyteller's ability to mirror a different reality some might find not comfortable. Identifying one winner from the Reviewer of the Year entries was extremely difficult, the judges said. In the end, they chose Paul Little, North and South, for his consistently intelligent, approachable and elegant style across a huge range. Nice Paul Little, you know his son Joel writes um, oh, songs with Lord. Oh, of course. Yeah, songs oh, I with know Lord. Him. Oh, wow, famous, yeah. cool, talent. Yeah, in one huge family. Talent. Yeah, yeah, so much. Yeah. Okay, on to one of our new categories this year, which might be a bit quiet next year. That's travel journalist of the year, a breed that now find themselves in a world unable to travel. Hopefully, you'll be off again soon. And the winner is Mike White from North and South. The judges said Mike's writing elevates his portfolio above all others. He gets to the heart of every story and every one of his stories has a heart. Congratulations to Mike. All right, that's the first section down. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Nailed it. It's so good. No, it just feels nice to be giving awards to people and making them feel happy in this time, you know? Yeah, getting out of the house to the getting secret location. Getting out of location. the house, absolutely. This is a very mm. secret location. <laughs> it is, right. Well, these are tough times for the media, so it was heartening for the Voyager Media Awards team to be able to offer several scholarships this year. Special thanks to the sponsors funding these opportunities. First up are the NIB Health Journalism Scholarships. And I do wish that that was NIB because NIB is just such a glorious word. Yeah, NIB is However, nice. it is NIB and I'll continue to call them that as it is professional. Here are the nominees for the NIB Health Journalism Junior Scholarship that provides $4,000 worth of funding. And the winner is Emma Russell from the New Zealand Herald. Emma's scholarship will enable her to look at an independent Canadian agency 
that has dramatically improved cancer survival rates compared to New Zealand. Congratulations, Emma. These are the nominees for the Senior NIB Scholarship. The winner receives $6,000 in funding and that goes to Nicholas Jones, NZ Herald. Nicholas's outstanding portfolio revealed a health system buckling under a tsunami of diabetes patients. He will investigate the implications of the diabetes epidemic in New Zealand and the Pacific. In addition to this year's scholarships, NIB has awarded an additional $2,000 to the 2019 Junior Scholarship winner, Hannah Martin from Stuff. COVID-19 meant Hannah couldn't complete her original project. She now plans to look at New Zealand's response to the pandemic compared with other Asia-Pacific nations. Next up is the Regional Journalism Scholarship, sponsored by Google News Initiative. The judges have awarded joint winners, and they are Natalie Okuri, New Zealand Herald, and Aaron Lehman, Waikato Times. They will each receive a $4,500 scholarship. Cha-ching! Natalie's proposal aims to highlight the stark disadvantages faced by Kiwis living outside major cities. Aaron's project looks at the critical shortage of doctors in regional New Zealand and how Ontario found ways of ensuring regional centres had good access to health services. Sounds like a trip to Canada on the cards there. <laughs> Soon. Soon-ish. Not now. Soon-ish. Yep. Yeah. The Peter M. Ackland Foundation funds fellowships to enable journalists to work overseas at a prestigious media organisation. The Foundation trustees have awarded two fellowships this year. The joint winners are Charles Anderson, Vanishing Point Studio, and Marva Anoka from TVNZ. Charles will work on several mixed reality projects at the Emblematic Group in California. Marva will be based with Al Jazeera in Kuala Lumpur, working on its Asian Current Affairs program, 101 East. Congratulations, Charles and Marva. It will be invaluable work experience. Yeah, it Wish sounds we could good. go as well. I know, that would be nice. Yeah, Thanks but to... we're here in this undisclosed location. Yeah. And they've locked us in. We move on to the feature writing categories, and these are the nominees in the Crime and Justice category. And the winner is Mike White from North and South. The judges described Mike's entry as a compelling portfolio that exposed disturbing failures in the justice system. Congratulations, Mike. All right, time for feature writing social issues, and these are the nominees. And the winner is Florence Kerr from Stuff. Florence's entry was a standout, the judges said. She crafted an evocative portrait of Horeke, a community living in poverty and a moving account of the measles outbreak in Samoa. Well done, Florence. Next, we have Feature Writing General. The judges have awarded joint winners to Steve Braunius, New Zealand Herald and Newsroom, and Duncan Grieve from the spin-off. The judges said Steve's feature on the late Frank Sargison was written in the lively, personable style this journalist has made his own. Duncan's writing style captures the essentials of feature writing. His profile of an Auckland hospitality legend was a perfect portrait of a complicated character. The next category, Best First Person Essay or Feature, attracted more than 90 entries and some of our top writers. And the winner is Tay Tibble, Newsroom. Tay's unflinching self-reflection following a visit to the Ihumato protest was a powerful wake-up call to make us face truths we might prefer not to see. All right, time for the best feature writer, Junior. The judges said many entries would have held their own in the open feature writing category. And the winner is Joel McManus from Stuff. Joel's entries were a masterclass in storytelling. His feature on scientist Dave Lowe was one of the best climate change stories the judges have read. Nice one, Joel. All right, in the Feature Writer of the Year short form, the judges have awarded a runner-up. And that goes to Michelle Duff from Stuff. And not just because it rhymes. I was just going to say that. It's excellent. Yeah. They chose that genuinely. And the winner is Nicholas Jones from The Herald. That doesn't rhyme. That doesn't. It doesn't no. have that zing to it like Michelle Duff from Stuff. No, but still, he did win, so congratulations. He did win. Good on you, mate. Yeah. 
Nicholas's entries stood out in a strong field. He tells warm human stories and uses them to reveal larger issues, the judges said. The winner of the next award, Feature Writer of the Year Long Form, will receive the Helen Pask Memorial Trophy. The judges have awarded joint runners-up in this category, and they are Donna Chisholm and Mike White, both from Bauer Media. The judges particularly wanted to acknowledge the high quality of work submitted by Donna and Mike. And the winner is Aaron Smale from RNZ. Aaron's entry demonstrated hard-hitting journalism and analysis. His pieces addressing inequality affecting Māori were deeply moving and beautifully written. All right, congratulations to them. We're moving on to another category now. Magazines. Magazines. I love magazines. Favourite magazine? Um, just the ones that are by the toilet that I can Oh, yeah, just toilet read. magazines. Yeah, just toilet magazines. Yeah. That's their name. <laughs> it's a whole genre. We haven't it got a, a category for toilet magazines, do we, Jane? No. Oh, this year. Okay. Maybe next year. We move to the magazine categories, and these are the nominees for best magazine cover. And the winner is Home New Zealand. The judges praised Home for its thoughtful use of imagery and restrained yet clever type. Home is not afraid to take risks. All right, here are the nominees for best magazine design, and the judges have awarded a runner up, and that goes to Metro. But the winner is Home New Zealand again. Woo! Yeah! Home topped the bill with this beautiful design, generous images and understatement in what the judges described as a quiet brilliance. A pleasure to pick up by the toilet and treasure, they said. Actually, I want to change my answer. I want it to be Home magazine, that's my answer. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, you're right on trend right I now. I know that, that's why I said it, we <laughs> to think that I'm cool. Yeah. No, but I do, I love pouring through it and imagining that I could live mm. in those beautiful homes. Yeah. But I can't afford it. A bit it. Marie Kondo for me, I can't get my house to ever look like it. a bit too messy? Is yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Learning too much about you, so I'm going <laughs> to move on. Here are the nominees for Best Newspaper Inserted Magazine, which sounds very improper um, and medical. However, it is not. And the winner is Sunday Magazine. Sunday is well written and confident in what its audience wants, the judges said. It uses photography boldly and every story is pertinent. Now, for best trade, specialist publication or free magazine. And the winner is Air Force News. The judges commended the publication on its good stories, brilliant photography, clever design, and use of graphics. Good old Air Force News. Not a huge readership, but apparently mm. it's flying off the shelves. Okay, our final magazine award, Magazine of the Year, is sponsored by Ovato, who incidentally will be printing all your certificates. Who's going to insert the canned laughter though for us? Mm. <laughs> the judges found it impossible to make a call between the two standout titles, so they've awarded a joint winner. Oh, controversial. Ooh, to Metro and New Zealand Geographic. New Zealand Geographic is a multiple winner of this award for very good reasons. It's a national taonga, a class magazine with superb writing and visuals. Metro 2 was impressive, back to its best, sassy, challenging and visually surprising. Congratulations to both titles. Now we move to photography and first up is Best Photography Features and here are the nominees. And the winner is Braden Fastier from Nelson Mail. Great use of light and some strong compositions that don't necessarily follow the conventional rules but work well, the judges said. Congratulations, Braden. Best Photography News. And there are some heavyweight names there. If you take a look at them there as they go on the screen. And the winner is George Hurd, the press. George was one of the first on the scene after the mosque attacks. His heartbreaking photographs, skillfully captured under great pressure, bring the viewer right into the horrific aftermath. The judges have also awarded a one-off prize for the single best photo to Stacey Squires from the Press, Dominion Post and Sunday Star Times. Stacey's photograph of a mosque survivor is one of the haunting standout images from the darkest of days. Now on to Best Photography Sport. 
the judges have awarded a runner-up in this category. And that goes to Ian McGregor from Stuff. And the winner of this category is Mark Baker, Associated Press. Mark demonstrated a clear knowledge of each sport, precise timing and superb camera skills. Photographs like this do not happen just by pointing a camera at the action, the judges said. Best Photo Story Essay is a series of photos on the same subject or taken at the same event. The winner is Cameron McLaren, New Zealand Geographic. His portfolio represented five years of respectful work at Gloria Vale to convey a story in a way not previously seen. Now for Photographer of the Year, sponsored by Canon New Zealand. The winner receives the Historic Photographer of the Year trophy. The judges have awarded a runner-up in this category, and that goes to Mark Baker, Associated Press. And the winner is Alan Gibson, New Zealand Herald. Alan has a special gift to record rather than intrude. He nailed every aspect of photography, including images from the mosque attacks and the Fakati White Island eruption. Next up are the video journalism and broadcasting categories. These are the finalists in Best Feature or Current Affairs Video, and the winner is Deathbed, the story of Kelly Savage by Luke McPake, RNZ. That it might be a bit tough for him to be there for a while, but it's not going to kill him or anything, is what I thought. Obviously, I was wrong. Luke's video was captivating, telling the story of New Zealander Kelly Savage, who died in a Japanese psychiatric hospital after being restrained for 10 days. Okay, Best Video Journalist Junior is next up, with the entries showing a pool of promising young talent coming through. And the winner is Cass Merritt from TVNZ. I said, the book is mine, but the film has to be yours. You have to make it into yours. This was new media reporting at its best. Cass used her multimedia skills to produce fascinating profiles of two engaging women to target a younger demographic. Congrats to you, Cass. The winner of the next award will receive the McKendry Award for Video Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Canon New Zealand. This bronze trophy made by sculptor Terry Stringer depicts the profile of veteran cameraman Derek McKendry with his hand holding a camera lens. And the winner of Video Journalist of the Year is Lawrence Smith from Stuff. The contract has come in. They make all the money off their land, they go back to where they are, and they're still left in poverty. Lawrence's you know? entry was a wonderful example of a sole operator thinking creatively. Each piece was beautifully shot and displayed excellent video, audio and editing skills. We are going to move on to Best TV Video Documentary. And here are the finalists. And the winner is... Infinite Evil. Stuff Circuit and Mouldy Television. School students from right across the country are taking to the streets today to... A clear winner in a very competitive category. This world-class investigation takes the viewer beyond the horror of Christchurch to look at the dark driving forces that led to the massacre. OK, here are the nominees for Best TV Video News Item. And the winner is... Measles Lockdown, One News by Barbara Drever. Hoping its red flag will attract medical help for its seriously ill infants. Violet Barbara showed the viewer the real outcome of measles for an audience that may have underestimated its impact, the judges said. Proof of the value of a reporter with their own regular patch. On to Best TV Video Current Affairs Short. The judges have awarded a runner-up. And that goes to Harry Brown's story, Seven Sharp TVNZ. His tummy. His parents didn't know it, but his heart was broken. And the winner is Black Friday, Sunday TVNZ by How Jahan Casanada. Make us feel so much. Make us confused. You could have died. Absolutely. Absolutely. You could have died. Me and my friend too. Make us angry. Please do. I'm not going to teach you how to do your job. And it was really something which I never think 
it will happen in New Zealand. The judges said the Sunday team perfectly captured the drama, emotion and heartbreak of those first few moments after the Christchurch mosque attacks. We move on to Best TV Video Current Affairs Long and the judges have awarded a runner-up to The Numbers Game Sunday, which they described as compelling, emotional and cleverly written. And I think she sort of saw it as almost a civic duty. She could actually do something to help. And the winner is Rediscovering Aotearoa, Aroha, Love, Re, TVNZ. It makes me feel super nervous, super anxious. Well, Simon, it's, it's chaos here in Hagley Park, really. You can probably hear the sirens going past me. It's ambulance. This incredible story was not just another follow-up story to the mosque attacks. It was a touching, emotional story from a unique perspective, looking at many different layers. All right, it's now time for the reporting categories, and these are the finalists in the crime and justice category. And the winner is Blair Ensor, The Press. Blair was an absolute standout in an extraordinarily strong field, the judges said. His portfolio of stories had everything. Investigative clout, initiative, impact, beautiful writing and presentation. Good stuff, Blair. Here are the finalists in the reporting social issues category. And the winner is Emma Russell, New Zealand Herald. Emma's Cancer Disgrace series was journalism at its best, weaving heart-wrenching stories with hard data. Now we are at Reporting General. These are the finalists. And the judges have awarded a runner-up to Kurt Bayer, the New Zealand Herald. And the winner is Patrick Gower, News Hub. The rise of white supremacy, the dangerous ideology behind the massacre in Christchurch. We'll find out. Compelling, skillfully woven stories ranging from a hard-hitting investigation exposing white supremacy to a heartwarming story about Zara, the Barrett Brothers Down Syndrome sister. The winner of the next category, Best Reporting Māori Affairs, will receive the Te Tohu Kairangi Trophy. These are your finalists. The judges have awarded a runner-up and that goes to Hikurangi Jackson, Marae TVNZ. And the winner is Te Aniwa Hurihanga Nui, Radio New Zealand. Exceptional reporting for one who is relatively new to the industry, the judges said. Te Aniwa explains complex issues in a simple and engaging way and delivers fresh angles. Here are the nominees for the Environmental Sustainability Award, sponsored by Meridian Energy. And the winner is Kate Evans, New Zealand Geographic. Kate's entry was spectacular, her story is accessible and engaging, the judges said. A credit to long-form journalism. Nice work, Kate. Next up, one of my favourite subjects at school, science, science journalism award. Were you a star at science? No, I was just making that up. <laughs> um, I wish that I was, so I have great admiration for all of these journalists. Yeah, respect. Much respect. Sponsored by the Science Media Centre, and the winner is Eloise Gibson, Newsroom. Eloise is not only a good writer and reporter, but also an investigator, a rare talent, the judges said. She also has the ability to communicate the complexity of scientific issues. The winner of the next category, which is Best Individual Investigation, will receive a $5,000 scholarship. Woohoo! That's a lot, isn't it? From the category's sponsor, E2. The judges have awarded a runner up, and that goes to Matt Shand, the Waikato Times and Dominion Post, for his New Zealand First Donations investigation. Uh, no money, sorry, Matt, just a certificate. Oh. Yeah. And the winner is Patrick Gower, News Hub, for his investigation exposing white supremacy in New Zealand. The judges found Patrick's confronting and painstaking investigation following the Christchurch mosque attacks put much needed context around New Zealand's most important news story of the year. Quick question to you, James. Yes. As we're reading the winners, 
Do you imagine them sitting at home and cheering and then like having a glass of champagne and celebrating? Yeah, I think so yeah. now. Especially Paddy G. Oh yeah. Five G's for Paddy G. Oh, he'd be going nuts on it. Good yeah. on you, Paddy. Yeah. All right. The next category, Best Team Investigation, is sponsored by New Zealand On Air and the judges have again awarded a runner-up. That goes to RNZ for eviction of Tamaki State Housing Tenants. And the winner is Product of Australia, sending convicts to NZ, buy stuff. An exhaustive investigation that glaringly exposed the consequences of Australia's shameful policy of using New Zealand as a dumping ground for people it doesn't want, the judges said. The best single news story category was hotly contested with more than 70 entries. And the winner is Melanie Reid from Newsroom. It needed an exceptionally tenacious journalist to expose the secret saga of Oranga Tamariki uplifts, the judges said. Melanie had the right mix of skills to ensure the public and politicians could look away no longer. Congratulations, Melanie. On to best coverage of a major news event. And the judges have awarded a runner-up in this category. And that goes to News Hub for their coverage of the Christchurch terror attacks. Thomas Mead. One person who was inside that Dean's Ave mosque. And the winner is coverage of the Samoan measles crisis by One News with Barbara Drever. Prayer and family support are the only things giving grieving mum for Otuevale any comfort as she mourns the loss of her two children. Barbara's unflinching reports on the Samoan measles epidemic including the influence of US anti-vaxxers, traditional healers, and finally the joint funerals of young victims were unforgettable. Congratulations, Barbara. Next is Best Editorial Campaign or Project. The judges have awarded a runner-up, and that goes to Fighting the Demon, NZ Herald and Greenstone TV. And the winner is Oranga Tamariki Uplifts Newsroom. Fighting for justice on behalf of those who cannot fight for themselves is a core responsibility of the media, the judges said. This campaign exposed the deeply flawed process of newborn babies being taken from their parents. The next category, Best Reporter Junior, is sponsored by the Asia Media Centre. The winner will receive an opportunity to travel to Asia, for example to attend a conference up to the value of $5,000, once travel to the region becomes possible. From more than 90 entries, the judges have chosen Logan Church, RNZ, as the winner. Here outside the Botanic Gardens, uh, in the middle of a city which can only be described as heartbroken, uh, more than 24 hours after those two deadly shootings yesterday afternoon that claimed the lives of 40. The compelling people. live radio cross by Logan in the aftermath of the Christchurch terrorist attack was a standout in a strong field of entries, they said. Logan displays skill level beyond his years. Congratulations, Logan. Next up, we have Student Journalist of the Year, which the judges described as a strong field. And the winner is Ashley Stanley, Newsroom. Ashley showed strong writing skills, a keen sense of news judgment, and a terrific sympathy with her subjects. Her stories were highly readable. Our next category is Community Journalist of the Year. And it was encouraging to see 50 entries in this category. The winner is Virginia Fallon, the Carpety Observer. Virginia tackled subjects that needed courage and tenacity, producing a great mix of stories that got to the heart of issues. Congratulations, Virginia. The next category is Regional Journalist of the Year sponsored by Google News Initiative. The judges said the entry showed that talent was spread right across the country. And the winner is Hamish McNeely, The Press. Hamish's portfolio of regional stories revealed a reporter with an exceptional eye for detail and a curiosity that keeps him tracking new leads. He's also a fine writer. The winner of the next category, Sports Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Sky Sport, new content coming soon, receives the Sir Terence McLean Trophy. And the trophy will go to, for the third year in a row, Dana Johansson from Stuff. Dana is a terrific storyteller, 
Her stories were disturbing, a little dismaying, and sometimes delightful. But by the end of each story, you felt you were in the know and relished the ride. On to Business Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Business NZ. The judges have awarded a runner-up, and that goes to Nikki McDonald and Stuff. And the winner is Tim Hunter from the NBR. Tim's portfolio shows a business journalist who is confident in his ability to tackle difficult stories in depth. His writing style has a skip to its beat that keeps the reader engaged. Congratulations, Tim. A skip to its beat. It's a real skip to Tim. Yeah, Tim's got a real skip to his beat. Everyone says that about him. Yeah. Yeah, and his work. Go find him. <laughs> we come to Political Journalist of the Year, and here are the nominees. And the winner is Audrey Young, New Zealand Herald. Audrey's portfolio was a fine example of political journalism. Two news breaks, a gentle feature, and a commentary on a rapidly moving story that drew on her institutional knowledge. Congratulations, Audrey. Now for Broadcast Reporter of the Year, sponsored by New Zealand On Air. The judges have awarded a runner-up, and that goes to Paula Penfold, Stuff Circuit and Māori Television. So I wanted to catch up with you all of these years on to find out a little bit more okay. about that, because of course... The and our 2020 Broadcast Reporter of the Year is... Jehan Kasanada, Sunday, TVNZ. It really is extraordinary having cops with guns over there, gang members of different persuasions over here, Fleet-footed, intelligent and empathetic. Jehan clearly has mastery over the television current affairs format. The judges commended him on the very quick turnaround of his Christchurch Mosque story. Okay, the winner of the Reporter of the Year, sponsored by Voyager, receives the Voyager Cup, first presented to Jim Tully in 1978. It probably wasn't called the Voyager Cup then, I'm presuming. As you can see, it's had quite a history. That wasn't Jim Tully, by the way. There's a runner-up in this category, and that goes to Phil Pennington, RNZ. The judges wanted to acknowledge Phil's excellent work, which was particularly strong in the wake of the Christchurch massacre. And the reporter of the year is Guyon Espiner from RNZ. The judges commended Guyon on a strong body of work, but they were particularly impressed with his persistent and determined work to break one of the biggest political stories of the year, the New Zealand First donation scandal. Well done, Guy. Now, for the newspaper categories. Oh. What? That means we're near the end. This is near the finish line. Because <laughs> I know we've got three pages to go. You shouldn't be excited about that. You should be wanting to give more awards to our beautiful journalists. I in do, New but, but, but how you, long do we, how long do we ca carry on? You also want to go home. I get yeah, it. I get so. it. That's fine. All right, I'll mm. just tr try and keep reading fast. Okay, best newspaper, front page, okay? A combination of good design, clever headings and content. And the winner is the press. The press sneaked in ahead of the pack, knowing when to shout and when to whisper in a noisy newsstand environment. We come to Community Newspaper of the Year, sponsored by ASB. The judges acknowledged the high standard of entries, describing the news coverage as wide-ranging, balanced, professional and relentless. They have awarded joint runners-up to Mountain Scene and The Courier, Temaru, both from Allied Press Publications. And the 2020 Community Newspaper of the Year for the second year running is The Beacon. The Beacon is a complete package that cares about what happens on its patch, from the big story to club activities. Its coverage of the Fakari White Island explosion was first class. Next up is Newspaper of the Year, up to 30,000 circulation. And the winner is, for the third year in a row, the Waikato Times. The Waikato Times stood out from the rest of the pack in a crowded field, the judges said. It produced heart-wrenching coverage of the Fakari White Island tragedy. Now for Newspaper of the Year, more than 30,000 circulation. And the winner is the NZ Herald. 
The Herald showed itself as the most comprehensive daily paper in the country, highlighted by tight news writing, deft editorial judgment and strong design. It dissects the nation's key stories better than any of its print competitors. And now to Weekly Newspaper of the Year. And the judges have awarded a runner-up. And that goes to the Weekend Herald. And the winner is, for the second year running, the Sunday Star Times. The Star Times sets the standard for weekend newspapers rising above the noise of the week to give readers something fresh and different. The paper is bright, engaging and compelling. We come to the digital categories now and first up is Best Narrative Serial Podcast. Do you like podcasts? Yeah, I do. I listen to too many of them mm. while cycling. That is not wise. You're not supposed to listen to podcasts. No, you'll while go cycling. off the road. Anyway, uh, it's not about us. Let's not talk about that. No, we don't need to know about it. The judges describe this category as packed with an impressive depth of quality. And the winner is White Silence, RNZ and Stuff. A powerful retelling of the Erebus story, resulting in a compelling new take on New Zealand's worst peacetime disaster that skillfully guided listeners through even the most complicated elements of the tragedy. Best episodic recurrent podcast. Now this was a tightly contested category, resulting in joint winners being awarded. They are Out of My Mind Stuff and Hekakano Aho. RNZ and Ursula Grace films. The judges said Out of My Mind was thoughtful, brave and insightful, giving listeners a sometimes distressing view from inside the heads of three people with mental health conditions. Hekakano Aho was a thought-provoking series exploring what it means to be a young Māori living in the city, challenging the listeners to consider the far-reaching consequences of colonisation. Hey, I've, I've had to think about your suggestion to not listen to podcasts on the bike. I think it's wise. Okay, I think it cool. is wise. Yeah. Maybe I'll listen to them on the toilet, a bit like the magazine reading, possibly. Another image I don't want to picture. You don't want Just that. as long as there's no lycra involved, then anyway, let's move on, shall we? Because it's... No, that's fine. It's fine. There is no lycra involved in, in this uh, award ceremony. Thank you. Next up is Best Innovation in Digital Storytelling, sponsored by Google News Initiative. And these are the nominees. The winner is Fighting the Demon, NZ Herald and Greenstone TV. Excellent journalism on New Zealand's meth crisis, the judges said. Compelling from the start, it uses powerful video, excellent graphics and incredible talent to hold the viewer right to the end. On to Best News website, sponsored by Huawei. And there's a runner-up in this category. And that goes to Newsroom. The judges commended Newsroom on its investigative reporting on stories of national importance. And the winner is NZ Herald. There were several standout performers in this category, but it was the Herald website that led the way on the year's biggest stories. The next two categories are sponsored by Voyager. Here is Voyager CEO CB Woodhouse with a few words. From myself and the team at Voyager Internet, we are proud to be sponsoring the awards for another year. In this time of COVID, we acknowledge the role played by essential workers. But let us also acknowledge the role played by journalists, because journalists are the essential workers for truth, working tirelessly through webs of conflicting information to get to the truth, and in many cases, putting their lives on the line to inform us, the public. It is vital for a functioning society to have accurate and partial reporting, for the justice system, for democracy, for scientific reporting, and especially in this time of COVID-19. It's really tragic that at this time when science should ever be more valued, conspiracy theories are abounding. This has resulted in the 5G conspiracy theory, meaning that 20 Kiwi cell phone towers have been vandalized, which puts people at risk who may be trying to phone emergency services. Unfortunately, the towers that were burnt down weren't even 5G towers. But anyway, beyond all that, I just want to say how important journalism is and how proud we are to be a supporter. Congratulations to all the winners. Enjoy your night and we'll see you next year.
Thanks, CB. All right, these are the nominees for Website of the Year, sponsored by Voyager, of course. And the winner is the New Zealand Herald. In a strong field, the Herald impressed the most with its bold strategy for expanding its audience and a powerhouse news operation that dominated the biggest moments in an eventful year. And now, drum roll please. It's time for the Voyager Newspaper of the Year. The three judges must choose a winner from the three newspaper categories. And this year, the winner is another drum roll please. NZ Herald. The judges could not look past the Herald's consistency and comprehensiveness and its record of setting the news agenda with incisive daily journalism. I'd like to bring you in. Yeah, bring them in. Come on in, come on in to our final award. It's our final award, Ooh, James. Oh, yes. Our final award. I'm on my tippy toes. We've taken my high heels off. I'm on my tippy toes. With excitement, the final award is Editorial Executive of the Year, sponsored by ASB. The winner receives this cup. Oh. This cup here. It's beautiful. First presented in 2016 to Barbara Fountain, the editor of New Zealand Doctor. And this year's winner is Annabelle Lee Mather, executive producer of The Hui. Annabelle leads a team who provide Māori current affairs for all New Zealanders, a pioneer who enriches New Zealand's journalism and culture. Her passion and inventiveness for a unique field of storytelling extends to the Casketeers and in 2019, the creation of the Matangi Rea documentary series and podcast about Māori political legacies. Congratulations, Annabelle, and congratulations to all our winners because, Jackie... What? It's the end it's of the It's the show. end! Oh, fantastic! Well done, you guys. I mean, it's been wonderful to be here. Thank you for having us. Not that you had much choice. We were hired to be here, so <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> it has been, and look, you know, um, there's a lot to celebrate. We gave away a lot of money. Um, I really must enter these awards sometime. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, we're going to stop uh, blabber blabbering, that's a technical word, and we're going to leave the last word to Jane. Thank you, James and Jackie. You've done a great job pretending there was an audience or anyone listening to you out there. Big shout out to Simon and the low-tech crew. You've done an amazing job. It's been a big day. And congratulations to all our winners. James and Jackie read shortened versions of the judges' remarks tonight. So the full comments will be up on the Voyager Media Awards website after the ceremony. And we'll make sure you receive your certificates and trophies in the next week or so. See you all back for the 2021 Voyager Media Awards. Good night. <laughs>